One of the best places to look for inspiration for building is art. Being an artist, I like to take the things I know about it and apply it to my builds. Things like composition, shape design, color theory, and focal points. All of which are very applicable to Minecraft builds. Other people's art can also be an amazing source of ideas that can start to get your creative juices flowing. In this series, I'm going to be taking art of architecture and recreating them in Minecraft. The nice thing about art is that, assuming it's done well, it's going to give you a solid foundation for all the things I mentioned previously. Often they will have pleasing colors, interesting shape design, and will probably be more thematically enriched than your average building. But most art is not voxel, so how do you take something like this and put it in Minecraft? Well, I attempted to build four such examples in this episode, and here's how I did them and what I learned from them. Looking at this first image by... Well, I'm not sure what his name is, but here's a link to his portfolio. The first thing that I looked at was color composition. You can easily get a block palette just from looking at the art and trying to match a block or multiple blocks to it. We're going to expand upon these. These end up being the basic foundation for my build. I also found out pretty quickly that just because a block might be similar in color doesn't mean that it's going to be best with the other blocks that you have available to you in Minecraft. The second thing that I look at here is shape design. If we outline the building in as many major shapes as possible, it immediately helps break the barrier of putting it into a voxel setting. But it also gives you some information of how shape design lends itself to a pleasing image. Once I have a good idea of roughly what my shapes are going to be and roughly how big they're going to be in game, I picked out a spot in the art that I can definitively say is an easy starting point to build. I found throughout these that doors are an easy start because they give you a pinpoint location on the art and, and it's going to be to scale with the doors in Minecraft, usually. From here, I can start building things around it. I'm looking for rough measurements that I can make. For example, if there's a window nearby, is there roughly one block's worth of space between it and the door? Or is the window one block tall or two blocks tall? This particular art gave me some difficulty on the entrance because the way everything is to the right of the door is kind of crowded together. Its spacing doesn't really fit in Minecraft, so I just kind of had to make it up. Unfortunately, my favorite part of the build, the spiral window above the door, was pretty hard to recreate. I made it the best I could given the limitations, but as you can see in the art, the door is exactly in the middle of the house in relation to the peak of the roof, but it isn't true of the house I've built. All this takes is being a little bit flexible to make everything fit together and really just uh, meant moving all that cluttered stuff to the right and, and making it a little bit wider than it looks like in the art. One of the most difficult parts of recreating art in Minecraft is that art is inevitably going to have more detail in it than you can build. It's going to be up to you to decide what details to omit or include. If you choose to include them, you can simplify them like I did with the wood trim on the sides of the buildings, or take the concept of the details as inspiration and try to recreate it as your own in a way that is more fitting of Minecraft like I did with these little windows. Of course, if we were simply using this build as inspiration and not straight up recreating it, I wouldn't be too worried about keeping things this close. All in all, this first build turned out pretty good. This is a building that I would be happy to put in my world, and I like the design and theme of it, so I'm glad it translated to Minecraft well. Oh, alright, so this one's pretty terrible. I know, I know, it's not great! You think I don't know that? You, you don't have to say it, I, I didn't even get halfway through it before I decided it was unsalvageable. Truly, I'm sorry that you even have to look at it. This wasn't the artist's fault though, Etienne Hebinger's art looks amazing and I was drawn to it because of the relatively wild colors of the building. And since we have concrete and terracotta blocks that look pretty similar in color, I wanted to see if I could make it in Minecraft. I couldn't. <laughs> These blocks are way too wild for Minecraft. The biggest issue is that there's no smaller block variations and it's really hard to put any decorative blocks on them. So basically you're limited to full blocks of vibrant colors and then it's just flat surfaces. The results speak for themselves. This would probably be way more inspiring as like a Conquest Reforged build. All right, this one's more like it. Really, the style is pretty similar to the first. The artist linked here uh, made it a kitty bakery. Cute. The roof got me, and also the peripheral details like the bakery stand on the side is really cool. 
Sadly, we don't actually have a purple block like the roof is, but it turned out good anyway. The way this is drawn really lends itself to Minecraft with the brick base and the high variation of blocks as we go from the brick at the bottom to wood to white terracotta to wood. Uh, it really breaks up these builds. If they were just one solid block type like before, then it's not going to look great. Uh, this, one's, this one's good to take as inspiration in that regard. Pretty straightforward build. I do like how it turned out. It's similar enough in style to be built next to the one that we built first uh, without thinking too much about it. I think these could definitely go together. Especially if you were to take some details from one and apply them to the other to give them more similarities. Maybe make the roofs match. Or maybe uh, or maybe you don't want the roofs to match. Maybe that's the cool thing about your, your town is that uh, you have purple and red roofs. That, that's cool, right? One of the hurdles that you'll have to deal with if you decide to take inspiration from art is that unless the art depicts it from multiple angles, you're going to have to make up the backsides on your own. This is actually a pretty good exercise in taking thematic elements and expanding on them on your own. I left the back fairly boring, but we could have gotten pretty wild back here. There's plenty of space for a more exciting fish dock, maybe a storage unit, another portion of house unseen from the front, entrances to cellars, so many things you could do. Once again, the little details left me building for myself here. These windows in the art are pretty packed with detail in a very small space, so I winged it. And what I actually found was that even though I wasn't staying really true to the way it is in the art, I consistently came up with new styles of windows that I hadn't built before that I really liked. That is the power of references. If you're not already a good builder and you try taking inspiration from art, one of the things you might notice is that little details often repeat themselves throughout the build. Uh, that's what gives it its theme. The metal spires on top of the roof peaks is a good example, with the very top of the roof having the most dramatic spires. There are also multiple places where I use trap doors in various different ways because it kind of matches all the ways the artist uses wood trims or window frames. If you were to make a village, these little details are things that you can carry from one house to the next and give them a feel of similarity. Another thing that I think that this piece of art really exemplifies is that no portion of the house is boring. All of it has some sort of draw to it. While we're allowed to keep things pretty simple at the base of the house to make sure that it isn't overwhelmed with details and clutter to give our eyes a rest before we look at the rest of the build, the side of the house is decorated with a little shop and a chimney, the other corner has a dock, the walls have interesting windows, Really, if you take a look, you'll notice that there's no section of the art that is left undesigned. It's all meant to show ways that the artist can make it feel alive. And we're doing the same thing here. This last one was more of a learning process than anything else. The picture looks like it would translate perfectly well into Minecraft, and while it does, it's just kind of a giant block of stone, which isn't the most exciting thing. I didn't even bother dressing up the backside, granted. You could make it stick out more, but I wanted to focus on why the source image is a little bland. This building would be pretty unassuming if it were in the middle of a city and it would blend in perfectly and you probably wouldn't have to think twice about it. I was a little sad that there wasn't a better block option for the shingling on the top, but it's fine. This building probably belongs in a different biome, like a desert or something. Throw stuff like this into your city. Don't make it a standalone building. Don't make it supposed to be like a, a focus point. Don't, don't worry about it. Thanks for watching. I've been wanting to combine my hobbies of building and art into an informative format on YouTube. So I really hope that people like this so I can do a little bit more of it. Bye.